Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is an African tradition that whenever you address a group of people, you ask an elder for permission to speak. And today I rise with the permission of Lori Vance, who is an elder in the village that we call the 17th Assembly District. Um, so back in January, during the State of the State Address, Governor Evers declared 2023 as the year of mental health in the state of Wisconsin. He then announced an investment of $500 million into mental health services and resources across the state of Wisconsin. This is a sorely needed investment, particularly after our struggles over the last three years. I wanted to start there because I think that we can all notice the stark contrast in the governor's uplifting, hopeful message in January versus today's slate of bills up for discussion here in the state legislature. Today is all about the Republicans' year of crime and punishment. Rather than attempting to address the root causes of why people act the way that they do, particularly over the last three years. Assembly Bill 55 is one of those tough on crime bills. It seeks to increase reckless driving penalties eight to tenfold across the state of Wisconsin. And I think it goes without saying that those penalties will fall hardest on disadvantaged communities throughout Wisconsin. Even though I've had plenty of F-150s doing 90 miles an hour, shaking their fists and getting on your bumper on my drive here to Madison from Milwaukee. Permission to read from a printed document from time to time. Without objection. This is because Reckless driving is not just an issue in Milwaukee or Wisconsin. My office commissioned a Legislative Reference Bureau memo, which found that reckless driving has increased nationwide since the COVID-19 pandemic began. For example, the number of nationwide traffic fatalities increased from 7.2% from 2019 to 2020, even though the number of total miles driven by all Americans decreased from 13.2% between 2019 and 2020. Here in the Great Lakes region, Minnesota has just recently experienced its worst reckless driving years of all time. 120 speeding related fatalities in 2020 were Minnesota's most since 2008 and they had 94 fatalities between January and July of 2021 alone. We must ask ourselves, why is this happening in the United States? And why is it happening now? That isn't to say that we don't have a reckless driving problem here in Wisconsin. We do. And it's, it is to acknowledge that Wisconsin has a chance to be at the forefront of addressing this problem equitably and effectively. I've worked on the reckless driving issue over the past several years with the Sherman Park Community Association in Milwaukee. Their holistic approach to reckless driving utilizes the five E's, engagement, education, equity, engineering, and enforcement. While this bill claims to be a panacea of sorts for reckless driving in Wisconsin, it really only addresses one of the E's, enforcement. To truly combat and prevent reckless driving and its root causes, it will take a plan that involves increased mental health resources, re-engineering our streets to make them safer for drivers, walkers and cyclists, and most importantly, engaging and educating our communities. This is a big part of why I support Milwaukee Mayor Cavalier Johnson and his commitment to our city's Vision Zero campaign. Vision Zero is a significant departure from the status quo in two major areas. One, Vision Zero recognizes that people will sometimes make mistakes. So the road system and related policies should be designed to ensure that those inevitable mistakes do not result in severe injuries or fatalities. 
This means that system designers and policymakers like us are expected to improve the roadway environment, policies such as speed management and other related systems to lessen the severity of crashes. In the other way, Vision Zero is a multidisciplinary approach, bringing together diverse and necessary stakeholders to address this complex problem. In the past, meaningful cross-disciplinary collaboration among local traffic planners and engineers, policymakers, and public health professionals has not been the norm. Vision Zero acknowledges that many factors contribute to safe mobility, including roadway design, speeds, behaviors, technology, and policies, and sets a clear goal to achieve the shared goal of zero fatalities and severe injuries. Well, it's true that the city did ask for the penalty increases in this bill, but the city also acknowledges that these penalties are only a small part of what Milwaukee is asking for to curb our reckless driving problem. Milwaukee also needs the safe street investments that the governor proposed in his budget, particularly on dangerously designed state highways in Milwaukee. Take, for example, Appleton Avenue in the 17th Assembly District, which is Highway 175. It's designed like and therefore operates like a freeway, a freeway that cuts directly through proud neighborhoods where people live, work and play. We must center equity and engage in communities in order to make some headway against reckless driving. Very rarely, if ever, is equity and community engagement achieved solely through enforcement. So I'll close by saying this. I applaud the representative from the 84th for wanting to combat this issue which is indeed a current problem and one that's in need of a solution. I just sincerely hope that he and other folks that support this bill today will join the efforts that is mentioned, that I mentioned today to ensure that we are putting in work to combat, combat reckless driving once and for all. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative